guys. Uh, I am Abby Road Rage Schneider. This is my dearest dear Claire Bacon, a.k.a. Slutty the Clown, which I do need to see that movie that's besides the point. And we are here yet again with once more with Abby and Claire to discuss another couple banger episodes. Uh, yeah, great episodes. Covering the last episode in season one. So season one is a shortened season because all the other yep. seasons have like 20 something per season. This it's one only has 22, 12. I think. Yeah, I think that's the, the this average. This is just a 12. No season yep. two is 22. So this one only has 12. And I guess being the first season, again, we said we don't know... Uh, we don't know if they knew what, what you know, if they were going to get picked up or whatever. So anyway, today we're covering the season finale of um, season one and then yep. the season premiere episode of season two. So let's begin with uh, Prophecy Girl. First, Claire, how are you? I'm very well. How are you, Abby? I'm great. I've missed your face a lot. I've so, missed your too. Anyway, as we do, I'll give you kind of like a brief rundown of the episode. I'm hoping that y'all got to watch this week or that you'll watch along with us. And I would love to see more people pop up on the comments. And honestly, we'd love to have you as a guest on our little podcast. Yeah, absolutely. We, we'd love to have some guests on. And we could always move around for anybody or work in advance and pick a couple of episodes out yep. for later, you know, in a few weeks or whatever. You don't have to run with the flow Let's every week. Do what works Let us know. Time. I think that's great. So, anyway, this is the first season finale, and Giles gets a hold of the Codex from Angel and discovers the ancient prophecy. And in this prophecy, it states that Buffy will face the Master and Buffy will die. Well, it's really, it's a heartbreaking episode because she hears this. She overhears them talking about this. And clearly, she's a bit traumatized. Uh, she quits. She just says, yeah. I'm not doing it. And um, doesn't want to die. She basically reverts to her teenage yes, self. And she should be. It's like the most heartbreaking thing. She, she yeah, looks at sad. them and real quietly goes, do you think it'll hurt? And then she says, you know, I'm 16, Joss. I don't want to die. I'm 16 years old. So she just says, that's it. I quit. And Angel tries to console her. And she's like, don't touch me. This is it. I'm 16. I don't want to be a slayer. I didn't ask for this. I quit. Yeah. And she storms off. She's like, clearly you're not paying attention. But um, Willow and Cordelia end up in a room together, which is always unusual. And they've seem to have somewhat of a more relaxed relationship now that Cordelia is bordering She's definitely mellowing. Beings. Yeah, she's definitely bordering on human beings. So, um... <laughs> bordering. She's waiting for her boyfriend to come meet her and she's kind of annoyed that he's late, but it's, you know, she's, normally I wouldn't put up with this, but with him, I think it's so cute. Like, I don't know. I think uh, Cordelia is smitten. Uh, needless to say, they do go to the room, they see them in a room, and they're just, looks like they're watching cartoons, and she's like, oh, isn't that cute? I should be mad, but I'm not mad. Yeah. And when she goes to open the door, the boyfriend falls out dead. He's leaning up against the yes. door, and Willow looks in, and the screen with the cartoons, with the Looney Tunes, is like splattered with blood. Yes. And it's, it's, it's quite graphic. It's, it's pretty good. It's for one of the and scenes. she even says, like, out of all the stuff I've seen, I've seen, yeah. you know, this was the realist because, A, it's during the daytime, which to me, anytime anything is discovered during the daytime just makes it that much scarier because the daytime is supposed to be your safe time. Yeah, and the innocence of the cartoons on the screen, you know, and it kind yes, of looking at the like they're watching is, TV and it's quite shock. It's like, and it, yeah, it, it traumatized her. And um, Buffy is determining, hi, baby, hi, Clint. Um, hi, Clint. Buffy has determined that she's not going to go to the dance because, oh, I forgot all about this. Xander asks her to the dance. That, so that's Xander, quite that, hard to watch as well. That's, it's that's so pretty awkward. painful. He just, he genuinely is working his guts up with Willow. Like, I could do this. I could do this. I could do this. And he asks her, yeah. and like, no, I don't think of you that way. I mean, it's hard. And every 
girl has been there and every guy has been there. And, um, yeah. I do hate it when so, people leave their dead boyfriends lying around. I, yeah, I totally agree with that. <laughs> poor Willow is just, you know, being a good friend, you know, trying desperately. Oh, but she's so gutted as well. You can just see her little heart's broken as well, you know? Yes. So, anyway, uh, jo Joyce... <laughs> ends up surprising Buffy with the dress that Buffy wanted for the spring fling. Um, but Buffy's like, I'm not going. And she's like, why? You didn't get asked? And she's like, well, no. And he goes, not by the right person. And she's like, yeah. yeah. And I give Joy so much credit in this episode because she tries yeah, so hard. Yeah, it's quite beautiful. It it's very nice. Yeah. And she, she doesn't push, but she tries in so many ways. At one point, she even says to her, if I ask you what's going on flat out, will you tell me? You know, yes. or and you know she's not going to tell her. So, anyway, Joyce gets a phone call. It's the police. She says, "Go to Willow." Buffy goes to Willow's house, and again, Willow is traumatized by the fact that she oh, was, she's she's it's totally entered her safe place, and she's not coping well. And I think Buffy realized at that moment that she can't quit. That you know, there she's their only hope in this. Yeah. So um, I do like later when, when, you know, Buffy decides she's going after she, these two episodes, Buffy is frustrating because she, she's angry and she she's sad. very angry. She's, she's very scared. bitter. And she's sad. She's been a teenage girl as well. Also for kind of the first Some time you really moments. see it from the first episode. And all she wants to do is, be a girl, but, um, yes. so she's frustrated with everybody. She's frustrated that Giles knew that this was the prophecy, but he didn't tell her cause he was busy trying to find a way out of it. That yes. was the next episode. But anyway, at one point, um, Willow and Xander are in the library and Miss Calendar is helping Giles because so, he's Zander So yeah, after Xander's been Zander's owned. Owned. <laughs> Yeah, he got... <laughs> He got really, I mean, it was, it was painful and awkward because he just kept trying. Like, even after she said no, and I don't want to yeah. ruin our friendship. And he's like, but what if it doesn't ruin it? And, and then he kind of turns nasty and says, well, kind of think you need to be undead then, don't you really? Yeah. You know, that's the only yeah. guy that's going to How about you know somebody with a pulse? Blah, blah, blah. Type. And um, so anyway, I do think it's hysterical that when Buffy... <laughs> I mean, now Willow goes about Miss Cal Who let her in the club? Like, she's all yeah. she yeah. to have a new Scooby and they were not consulted. So Buffy knows at this point that they believe it's a child that is the chosen one. Yep. And um, that he is going to lead her into hell, which is not Florida, contrary to popular belief. And <laughs> yeah, he's, um, he's so small, so. she's like, you know what? I'm in. And they're like, we'll come with you. And she's like, no, this is my prophecy. And now she's just resigned to the fact. And that she's kind of a bit I'm, of a bitch about it as well. Oh, a bit of like, a bitch. I don't need to be looking after you. Yeah. And the next episode's even worse. But she goes off on her own because there's nothing Buffy can't handle. And runs into Angel. She's pretty shitty to him as well. Um, but... Oh, no, wait, I'm getting my, my, my time's mixed up. But anyway, she's out there. She's patrolling. She sees that the master's bones are missing prior to this. And that's why she's pissed at Giles, that she feels like he's keeping stuff from her until he knows the truth. And, you know, she can handle anything. She's the enslayer. So anyway, she's in the park. She's patrolling. She comes across little Colin, the chosen one. And... He starts, you know, with the, can you help me? And she says, I know who you are. Just take me where we got to go. And he doesn't even fight it. Puts his hand out, his little tiny feet. Uh, I use that for the trailer for the Civil War. That is such a, a really beautiful shot scene as well. Yeah. In, in this episode, the whole walk into. down. And yes, we could play the whole, I don't know that you're <laughs> Satan spawn or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um <clears throat> Anyway, uh, so Buffy gets taken down to where the master is, and he 
quickly puts an end to her. Like there yeah. is no, he glamors her instantly. And oh, in he definitely minutes, pulls the Jedi like right there. Yeah. And he bites her and then he chucks her in a little puddle, a little, uh, yeah, throws her in face down, face down so that she drowned as opposed to dying from being drained. What Buffy finds out right before this, as she's being held in the thrall of a vampire, is that she and they had it wrong. The prophecy states that Buffy will die and the Master will be released, but what it doesn't specify is that had Buffy stayed away the whole time and just done more research, he he needed her blood to escape. Yeah. It's not anybody's blood. He needed her blood. So she walked right into this big old trap and... Um, at this point, Angel and a Xander to the rescue, they come after Buffy because they know she can't do this on her own. He's too powerful. And they come across her and they find her dead. And that dead. moment of Angel's helplessness because, you know, it was Xander that said, if she drowned, we can do CPR. Um, and Angel said, I don't have any breath. And that's a moment you don't think about that had it just been Angel and not Angel and Xander, but yeah, it would not have come true. back. So Xander performs CPR and saves Buffy. And Buffy comes back and she's instantly different. She's her um, not fucking around Buffy, basically. You know, yeah, just the new energy, new, new force. You let's let's do it. go kick this dude's butt. And um, when um, she catches up with him and everybody's down in the library, Xander and Angel are, I guess, on their way there. And Buffy goes up to the roof to confront the master. And it's a beautiful scene because he even looks different now that he's full flesh and uh, yeah. he's so much more present in the moment instead yes, of that kind of like and he tries again with the whole you know glamour only she acts like she falls for it a bit but she doesn't and uh mm -hmm. and he his first thing is but you're dead and she's like i may be dead but i'm still pretty and i was like yeah i may be dead but i'm still pretty and my favorite Perfect. quote of buffy Possibly of all time. It's actually and has been since I started Facebook back in 2008 or nine. It's my Facebook quote if you ever go on my page. But it says, You have broke up mouth. <laughs> yeah. Because you've got the law. The law. And I mean, I must be honest, there is quite a lot of good one liners in this entire episode. This ep these two episodes are where they really start coming in with the zingers. With and the quotes and the one line. Like, yeah. Write them all down, but there's just too many of them because they were coming fast and furious but she does say he says something about bringing hell to earth and blah 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 and she says something like if you're that amped up about hell go there and she yeah flips him over because underneath down in the it's a big picture window and she sees a big spike of wood so she tosses him in there he lands yeah. kaboom now he is so old that he doesn't completely dust he no. turns to a skeleton. a skeleton, but his that's the first time we've seen a skeleton still intact after a vampire's yes. been dusted, and that says a lot about the age, I think, of the vampire. Um, so this part is great because, uh, <laughs> what was it? I guess Miss Calendar and Willow go to help they Buffy. try to go and the they decide warn the, the sprinkling where... yep and so that's where they're going to go because that's where the vampires are going and they go run out to miss calendar's car and realize yeah they and they're, up, that they're not going to the bronze and that they've literally walked into a big old ambush and all the neighborhood vampires are there surrounding them and luckily cordelia yeah drives up in a car is like freaking out was like get in and this is where she's brilliant and has these impeccable driving skills where she yes. she says, where do we want to go? And Willow says, well, we want to get to the library. And uh, uh, she, she drives like, straight into the yeah. library. Got it there, but she just goes right through the school into the library. Mm -hmm. They 
close up the doors as best they can. Giles is getting bookshelves in front. They're trying everything. The vamps are breaking through the windows. Grabs Cordelia. My favorite part is Cordelia bites him and says, how do you like it? <laughs> yes. Because, you know, also we've got all the hell mouth opening. We've got all, you know, everything coming out, starting to snake around Willow's leg and trying to yeah, pull her down. The yeah, and there's a them. line earlier, which I don't want to forget, which is awesome. Uh, when they talk about things happening with a hell mouth, uh, a cat had a litter of snakes, a watering hole or a lake with some kids in started boiling, and a baby born with her eyes inward. Inside out. Ah! Yeah, that freaked me out. It was a great line in it. Absolutely. I loved that. But, yeah, there's all snakes coming out. Um, so Buffy shows up. Obviously, once the master, that's when the master. So all this is going all on skeleton. While, while Buffy's upstairs, healthy punch mouth. And um, once the master is killed, the hell mouth then, and that hell mouth beast is able to be, or I guess retreats. Um, so yeah, they come to realize that the hell mouth opening is literally right under the library that they spend all yep. of their time. Peaceful. Um, so again, Buffy is back. Big fight ensues. She says, we saved the world. I say, we party. So they go on to the dance. And weirdly, Buffy's dress, even though she ended up in a puddle of water, she wasn't all muddy. She wasn't all, she looked gorgeous. Her hair is a little messed up, but she still looked great. Yeah. And they go and they have their little, their little prom. And that is pretty much the end of this first episode. Is there anything I'm forgetting in here or? Um, nothing really I can think of. Just like, it's a very kind of I don't know it's very we saved the world we should party and it's all happy happy fun joy and yeah. it, it kind of feels wrong because it's so happy happy fun joy it's like yeah I think she's trying to just two. embrace that I want to get that I think she realizes how naive she had been before this and now yes. that she's died and come back for the first time um I'm sure that changes a person. Um, well, I, I think so. And definitely it, it kind of happens definitely in this episode as we go on to the next one as well. Yeah. I feel there is a, a change. Quickly for this, we have some music, obviously. Uh, we have when Buffy's found out, obviously, the prophecy and she's supposed to die and she's sat on a bed with the photos and she's going through the albums before Joyce comes and brings her the dress. We have Inconsolable by Jothana Brook. Great which song. is it's quite these two songs in this episode are quite in the background and if you're not listening hard enough right you can't really they're... realize it's a track yep but it's a great song and then when xander's sulking on his bed after he's been turned down by both of the scooby girls and said i'm not going to the prom with either of you and he's, he's sulking and he keeps hanging the phone up on willow when she's concerned um it's i fall to pieces by patsy klein what a classic which, yes, agreed, classic. And the the use of music in this show, as we've said before, Absolutely, is Absolutely, as we say classic. every week. It's outstanding. Um, yeah, and I think that's kind of good as well, because earlier you said, I'm just going to go and lay on my bed and listen to country music. <laughs> exactly. I do think there was one, when, when Buffy hears about the prophecy and she's going through all of these emotions and that whole, you know, will it hurt? And you're just like... You could see her face, but she says something to Giles about when a new Slayer comes, will you train her? Yes. And it's kind of a throwaway line for those. But of it's hard. It, it gets you. It, but it, it, gets you it in the hurts because everybody knows that if that were the case, I don't think Giles would then train. If Buffy were no. too completely dead, I don't think he would go on and train anyone else because he wouldn't be able to. And I think what she would wants like to, to think. know is that I mean more to you than just the job. Um, yes. Yeah. I think that's the real question. She yeah. feels so lonely. She can't rely on angels. She feels like she keeps getting her friends in trouble and put in danger. And it must be Tuesday. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, so that was yeah, a great up. episode. Fantastic. Great episode. I love it. And we say goodbye to the master. Um, in reality, some somewhat in the next episode, we realized that um, this next episode, which is the season 
premiere of, of season yes. two is called When well, She Was Season Back. two, and this is, it's kind of, a, as we said, we've done it this way because it's kind of a, it's a follow yeah. story. Yeah, it really is one story because, forgive me, but Buffy is an asshole in this episode. Yes, she um, is not a very nice person. She, yeah, she, uh, she was away for summer vacation with her father. In this time, Xander and Willow have become closer. They're working on their relationship. Actually, well, the, we have a moment. Night, for their little date night was the cutest thing in the world with them What's guessing that? movie lines. Because, I mean, I have those friends where they're just like the same person. Look at you, Adam Backus. But anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, were you, I know what you mean. But you know, that's because just, we're in that. Yeah, group. they know exactly what you're. So, um, yeah. And then the whole, you know, she's eating, and he puts the ice cream on her nose, and then she's like, "Oh, my nose is cold." And she's like, "But it's oh, so, so cute. cute. And then they come very, very close to kissing, and you're like, "Oh, is this happening?" And then Xander kind of pulls back a bit, and as he does, in between their two faces, you see a vampire. Yeah. And. Um, I call that Vampirus Interruptus. And uh, at that time, <laughs> yes, then definitely vampires. <laughs> Buffy returns from summer vacation just in time. And she, you know, Xander says, Yeah, that's the first one we've seen all summer. Like they've been nowhere. She's like, yeah. I guess they knew I was back, you know. And you could tell she's different. She is not fun loving Buffy. Um, she's, she's very, it's jaded her. She's but tired. She she's angry. Kick-ass shit. She yeah. does a workout with Giles, and he has to back her off. She just keeps breaking shit. Like, he's like, all right. And that's the trauma. Um, yeah. Obviously, she's too young to realize that maybe getting therapy, even though, I guess, she doesn't have to tell someone she's a slayer, but, you know, people do die and come back. And there's a whole... Oh, God, yeah. So, um, but she has a very, very bad attitude as a result of said dying so yeah absolutely um, and we find that she is literally dreaming of the master killing her over and over again every night as a matter of fact one particular dream she wakes up and angel is in her room yes oh, can i come in well you're already there pal but whatever um yeah. she is pretty shitty to him um and She's pretty shitty to everybody. And then the next night, or is it later that night? I don't even know. Um, I think it's the earlier in the day. She has yeah, that, that was, horrible vision. The horrible thing that she had, dream that she has. Well, she's kind of awake but asleep. Where yeah. uh, Dad slaps her and tries to choke her. Yes. And that really, and it turns into the master. And everything, as you could tell, this trauma is just eating her up inside. Um but they go to the bronze because that's what they do. That's there. what they do. What else are you going to do? And which you will discuss a little after uh, Chibamato is playing or they're performing at the bronze, which yep. we'll talk about afterwards. Cause that, yep. I only know them from seeing Buffy every time. And I always forget. And then I hear them again. They very much remind me of like an Asian Portis head. Like there's just something. Yes. About the sound. Yes. Very much so. so. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, Buffy, I mean, uh, Willow and Xander are already there. They're waiting for Buffy to show up. And Xander's like, where is she? Should she be here? Where is she? And and Willow's trying to be cute and puts ice cream on her nose again, trying to reconnect. Yeah. That and Bless. Xander's just like, you got something on your nose. Kid. You know, so yeah. Buffy the comes gone. in, sees Angel there, is really shitty to him basically tells him you know i didn't spend this summer pining over you i got over you and you need to move on too yeah and you know she goes i'm gonna move on to the living and walks by and even cordelia is like huh? well she goes you know, out her and her and like, what are you doing yes and then she goes to sander and asked him if he would like to dance. And this is one of those cringeworthy scenes that I knew, you know, I remember very clearly in my head. Yes, me too. Where Straight Buffy away. is practically on the dance floor lap dancing on lap, on yes. Xander, who she knows how he feels. He's told her he loves her. And she is just He's trying very desperately cruel. to make Angel jealous and everybody else in the room jealous. And honestly, doesn't even consider Willow's feelings in this. No, she knows not so. 
and it's really rude and disgusting. And then um, she, what does she say to him? She says something like, Xander, did I ever thank you for saving my life? And he's like, no. That's what she, she says, like, yeah. leans over and whispers in his ear and says, don't you wish I would? And then walks away and just leaves him like, Still. Me. <laughs> um, Excuse me. And Xander, I mean, uh, Cordelia actually follows Buffy out of the bronze. And I, I quote this so often because it's my favorite Cordelia line of all time. She just goes, get over it. Whatever is causing the Joan Collins to deal with it. Yes. Embrace the pain. Spank your little mom. Great line. Whatever. But get over it. You know, like I said, if Cordelia is calling you out on your attitude, you got to be a problem. Look at yourself. <laughs> and Willow, when they're back at the bronze, she's or not at the bronze, at the school or with, with Giles, she's like, you know what, maybe she's possessed. And he's like, uh, by what? And she's like, I don't know, one of those possessy things that happens. She's yeah. like, thanks for narrowing it down. But, um, you know, Willow wasn't necessarily angry with Buffy because she knows that's not Buffy. And yeah. um, so she's trying to think of otherworldly reasons why Buffy is acting the way she is. Because it's hurtful when your friend's just totally 180 yeah. you. Um and then Cordelia, as she's leaving Buffy after telling her off, she says in her Cordelia way, well, maybe I'll just see if Angel wants to dance. And at that exact moment, she gets kidnapped because Cordelia. Yes. And um, as Angel, they throw her into the hole or wherever she's been kept, Jenny Callender is there already on the floor. And we realize that this has been going on a while. Yeah, so then we go back to the library, and that's when Buffy walks in on them saying, she must be possessed, and something's going on. And she gets major Buffy attitude to the point where she tells them, you know, Giles has come, deciphered the prophecy to say that um, the anointed one and this guy, what is his name, Absalon, Brent Jennings is the actor. Yes. Um, but he is a creepy, weird vampire that reminds me of Mr. Trick a little bit. Um, they're yeah. planning on re uh, resurrecting the master. So she, in her scouting the night before, she realizes that the master's bones have been dug up. What I did like about that scene, and it shows you how we <laughs> don't give a shit about each other, is that Absalom makes the vampires dig with their fingers in consecrated ground to dig the master's bones up. Yes. So it's just a little bit of a, you know... Shows you how ruthless they are. Um, so basically, um, hi, Roland Red. Hi, Viv. Um, hey, Adam. Um, so anyway, uh, Buffy tells them, you know what? I was closest to the master. We killed each other. Like, you don't get a whole lot closer than yeah. that when he says that the prophecy says whoever was closest to the master. So Buffy's like, you guys stay here. I'm the Slayer. Back the heck off. Gives them all major tood and storms out. Oh, like, yeah. Pretty I obnoxious. I can handle this myself. I beat him the first time. You can all scratch. And um, at this moment, Snyder breaks them up because they're getting heated. And he's like, oh, don't you have a class to go to? And don't you have this to go to? Don't you have a job? He says to uh, <laughs> yeah. Giles. And then he says to Giles, he's like, I don't know. He's like, there's some things I can just smell. It's it's like a sixth sense. And Giles is like, yeah, and that's one of the five, pal. <laughs> but, you know, I just thought that was- Yeah, that's only statement. five, but hey. Um, so Buffy then realizes that Cordelia, because Xander's like, if only we would know when they're going to, and then a rock comes through the window and Buffy yeah. comes through it, and it's got, it's a brick with Cordelia's either necklace or bracelet wrapped around it. So she knows they've gotten Cordelia. This yes. is when she decides to go off on her own because she's going to handle everything. My hair's being weird. I'm sorry. And it's so weird. So um, <laughs> anyway, as she goes, Angel meets up with her. She's shitty to him again. There's one vampire. And she's like, this doesn't seem right. And yeah, it's obviously then they realize a trap. that, um, or at that point, Giles, Xander, and Willow realize that, yes, indeed, was a trap. But it was a trap. Because it wasn't close 
as in close, Going it would have been where he actually died in proximity. Correct. So it wasn't who was emotionally close mm -hmm. to the master at the time of his death. It was who was with his body when he died, which was Jenny Callender, Cordelia. Roland Red said, who yes. needs to watch Buffy when we can just listen to you guys talk about it? Well, because, Adam, we'd love to have you on here with us because we missed you. Yes, we would. Um, so, uh, you know, Q ambush of the Scoobies. Uh, Buffy gets back to the library and realizes, well, she finds Xander beaten and bloody. Yes. And she's like, and he is pissed. She tries to touch, oh, him, he's not him. To touch me. And she's like, why did they leave you? And he's like, if you for just one second would have worked with us, and instead of being just such a raging bitch, you would have realized that proximity, not emotional connection. And so they took Cordelia and Miss Callender and Giles and Willow as they were all in the library when the master was killed. Um, so Buffy goes after them. She's got Angel and, are Angel and Xander with her? Why do I forget that? I feel like they might've gone with her. And um, yes, because when they find them, uh, Xander's comforting Willow and Giles is comforting uh, Miss Callender. And, yeah, because uh, they've all been hung upside down. Yes, and they were going to be bled out the to bring uh, over the, the bones. Is Roland the... Red Hour, Adam, did you say? Yeah, I think so. Oh, is it? I think so. I could oh, be wrong. Hi, Adam. Sorry. Is it, is it you, Adam? Because if it's not, then I feel like an idiot, but I kind of think it is. And if, it, if um, it's not Adam, I don't know who it is. No, I think If it is. it is you, Adam, we love you. We love you. Yeah. And if it um, isn't, we love you for just commenting. So basically, Angel's like, you know, we gotta, we gotta have a distraction, and she's like, yeah, I'm gonna kill them all. Like that ought to distract them. Yeah, and that was and she just starts kicking ass, and um, again, they go. Xander gets Willow and and, and Miss Calendar and and Giles and. Um, and he's like, where's Buffy? And she's like, uh, yeah, she's working out her issues on the vampires. Yes. And she she worked out a lot of issues. And the end moment she's was so smashing great. up things to pieces, making sure there's he nothing sets left. One end on fire of the stick, and the other end is a spike. And she, I knew it. And then she Adam just, says it's Adam. No, <laughs> no. She double kills. And this is them. his code name. Okay, it's his code name, Adam. We like it. I think I, I don't know why I knew that, but I did. Um, I did. So yeah, double kill, stab, <laughs> and set on fire, which is never sucky. She then, you could see when that ends, like she has this moment of like, is she going to break down in tears? And she goes and she gets the sledgehammer and she smashes those bones. to dies. And then she breaks down and cries. And then Angel is there to comfort her. And of I course, think she allows big it. Forehead just, and big arms. Just, um, and he looks so young, but you know, he basically he tells him, a baby. He is a baby, he's a baby. He's um, a baby. So, this this episode, and then you know, again, everybody's pissed at Buffy, so it kind of ends with Giles and Buffy walking in her saying, How are they ever gonna forgive me? I was yeah. a heinous bitch, and he's like, Look, you know, like that's friendship. And she goes into class and she sees. Xander and Willow talking to each other and Xander looks back and looks at Willow and she's like, oh, they haven't forgiven me. And she walks in and, and Willow says, we saved your seat, you know, come on, sit down. And then she realizes that everything is going to be okay. But at the end yeah. of the day, her friends will forgive her for being a heinous bitch. Let's yes. be honest. So that was when she was bad and she was very, very bad. Very. <laughs> horribly mean to people horribly and she would yeah, say the that things she knew would strike the deepest so um but again she's i guess definitely being... a different girl by the time we move to this first episode after what's happened on the last two you know it's, it's like a i don't know it even looks different a little bit she's well yeah summer vacation new hair new outfit yeah got she's hair. And then, of course, I want you to remember the fact that in this one, it's the first time we actually get the full boom, whoosh, vampire explosion is in season two, episode one. Before yeah, that, we had the dust, then we had the skeleton, 
And now we've got like the dust, which is the explosion we actually really to Which the always coffee. makes me like think of a glitter bomb of stupid, so I enjoy it. Um, me too. But. It's perfect, but it's, it's the first time we get it. I feel by the time we got to two, they realized people liked this show and let's throw everything we've got. Yeah, they got a budget. You know I mean? Just great, you know. Um, oh, God, what have we got right? Oh, really red, really red. Oh, God. What's my name? Right, okay. Tell me what episode to watch next time and I'll come on. Oh, yeah. Honey. Absolutely, Adam. We'll message It'll you straight after and you can pick two. whatever you like. Yeah, season two. Episode two, which is some assembly required, which is required. A good one. I think Adam will like a good that. one. And then school hard. So school we will be watching hard is a good episode, episode as well. It's a great episode because that brings on uh, one of our favorite characters. I can't um, wait for that episode. Oh, and another question from Adam. Angel or Spike? Yeah. Spike Hi. or Angel? Angel or Spike? Oh, my God. Mm. Um, oh, so this could get heavy. It really does depend on the season. Um, I I love Spike, but when Spike got neutered, I didn't love him so much because I like his attitude and his sassiness, and his little Britishness. Um, Angel, uh, broody. When I was when I watched it the first time around, I loved Angel. Um, you know, I was into that tortured you know, hot, brooding, brooding dark. Um, now, God, I'll throw them both out with the trash. Maybe take one. Oh, I don't know. Oh, you see, divided, divided. Yeah. I was all, I liked, the, the Angel Buffy thing is iconic. It was the thing that came first. It was the whole, as you say, it was brooding. It was everything. I'm a spike girl. I'll be honest. We know we still bad things. We all know about this. But it's a TV show, but I'm a Spike girl. Yeah, he's I a mean, punk, he's an anarchist, you know. It's, it's his very character well has so but, much, you know, William the Bloody. And when he started, like, his whole... They, they both got all top, though, as well. They didn't age badly, either of them. No. They In didn't. real life, they're both all top. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, it's hard to say. I Again, I think, overall, I love me some Spike. Um, but again, yeah. he... I loved Spike and Drusilla. I loved that Spike. Oh, it was so good. Um, and Drusilla is... She's just amazing. She's just amazing. amazing. And I Princess. love that they are British. I just think it's so cute because they do it yeah. so well. Cute, heinous bitches are always forgiven. True story. I mean, true story. it's sad, but it's probably true. It is true. Um, so, what if we're just cute and we don't want to be a heinous bitch? Um, <laughs> yeah. that's all I just can't like me and Abby want to talk about Buffy. So yeah, next week we'll get to meet. Um, I don't want to jump the gun, but we will get to meet Spike and Drusilla. And Drusilla mm. is played by um, uh, Juliet Landau, Martin Landau's daughter. Oh, she's just amazing, and she's... still screen queen in my heart. Yes. Yeah. No. She's the two of them to me are the best. Even uh, they're absolutely. Joyfully yeah. disturbing, uh, uh, I always are. I have a great I profile picture of her that I used to use, and it's just a birdcage, and it's half her face as a vampire. Oh, she's amazing. Priscilla, and it's just, um, but yeah, so uh, anybody that wants to join Adam, if you want to join us next week, just watch. Uh, you are very welcome. Two, with episode two and episode three. If you can't do it during the day, or like we can move it. If it's not on, we'll move it. Simple and we'll that. just air it whenever, as long as it's not like the we can move it. There, not a problem. So, don't want to come on. We'll move it. Um, and then us. let's not talk about a bit about the music in in episode. Yeah, the music in this is. Please say it for me. I'll be a cat. Okay. it. It's Chivo Motto is the band, and I only know that because I heard them say it. I only know them from seeing this episode over and over again. But like I said, they just have a very Portis head sound like that. They do indeed. Yeah, ethereal um, twenty. So, um, there's the Sugar Water was the song that Zanga and Buffy danced to. Yeah, definitely in that one. Um, and I think there was a song that was coming in, and I can't decide if it's a star and an A or a minus and an A or how the word of the song's put. I'll, I'll put it in description. It's okay. like a symbol with an A for the name of the song. It was hard to de decipher when I looked at it, but it will be put in description with links for all the songs as usual when we put the second upload up. Um, yeah, because the song was. I just don't even know that, like. Um, if it doesn't matter, by Alison Krauss. 
featuring Union Station, which was more closer to the beginning with some of the touching angel moments. Yes. I mean, the music is amazing. Uh, like I said, I remember Sugar Water. Okay, so the episode is called, I mean, the song, the other call, song is called, it looks like Spoon. But I don't know what the symbol, I have to look and see what you wrote, because um, you never know with them. But they did say on the Google machine that Spoon was another song that they did. Right, on. I didn't find that one. But I'll confirm that because. It um, could be that, but it I don't know if it had taken me to a different link, but yeah, I definitely yeah. Sugar Water was the one they danced to, and it's both songs were so good. That song is so good. Give it a listen. Claire will put the uh, the link up. Yeah, there. all links will be in description on the upload. Because that's that's the kind of ladies that we are. This is so, what we do. Um, yeah, I just want to thank everybody for coming out, and um, you know, we say this every time, but we would love for you to like and subscribe and watch and and. Talk to us. Comment, ask us questions. Even Come on the show. Any constructive criticism is always welcome. Yes. Any help we could get. Constructive questions. As I say, thank you to everyone who watches as well. And if you could share every time you see us post a link or whatever, that would be great as well. That would be fantastic. And always check out um, Hamneyville Horror Podcast, uh, the Perfect Turd Podcast, because they are supporters of Scream Until You Like It Podcast. Scream Until um, You Like It. It is a Facebook uh, horror group that we think you should yep. join up um, because they're awesome and it's all things horror. Um, and if also thank you to stuff, Rich for being our admin and technical all the time. Richard Bacon, you can find him on Facebook at RB Photography. I would uh, one of these days we'll get his face on here. I know he doesn't like me yes, we will spot, get his face but, uh, on definitely. Claire's beautiful husband. Um, Sorry, Uncle Lloydy, but yes, yeah, she is married. Um, but yes, again, I love you guys so much. Uh, I love you too. I love that we do this. I love that we can take our love of Buffy and um, Absolutely. I, keep seeing, I keep tagging you. It's probably driving you crazy, but like all of my Facebook memories, like so randomly are just. No, Buffy that's great. I love to see it. Like, I'm assuming you, this is why we do this every week because we love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Really? It's perfect. So please watch along, help us out, like, subscribe, ring the little bell, and um, then you can see that beautiful face more often, like you I can. do. Thank you very much. We shall see Thanks. you next week. Love you guys. Love you guys. Bye. 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 Grr.